Hi, I'm Adam Lloyd and welcome to another Tech Unveiled. Today we get a better understanding of antennas and the impact they have on network performance. And joining me is an expert from Ericsson Antenna System. Hey Jan. Hey Adam. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, thanks. Do you want a coffee? Yes, please. Hey, listen, we've spoken a lot in recently about um, Ericsson 5G Advanced, mm. high-performing program or networks, but we haven't really spoken about antennas, have we? Mm. Yeah, so it might be new in this conversation here, but it really is all connected. Antennas are the gateway to high-performing programmable networks, especially when you think of energy efficiency and uplink. Uplink, that's interesting, because normally we talk about download speeds, don't we? Yeah, that's right. So downloads have been the focus in the past, and the antennas do deliver a downlink throughput. but Uplink is really interesting to talk about because it's becoming a major bottleneck in our networks now. So um, think of the change in how we behave, how users behave, right? It's not only downloading something from the network anymore. Yeah. It's really creating content all the time and then uploading something. Yeah. Right, videos, TikTok reels. I mean, everyone is a, c a content creator now. Yeah, absolutely. Or think of industrial use cases where um, Uplink is becoming mission critical. Yeah, so. Think of first responders coming to an accident and they might have a video stream to a doctor to assess what are the next steps they have to do. You really don't want to compromise on your yeah. network quality in uh, such a situation and especially on the stability um, of the uplink. And that all starts with the right antenna. Good, let's go and have a chat. Yes, let's go. Yeah. So Jan, Tell me then, antennas are key, obviously, to high-performing mm -hmm. programmable networks, yeah. but how important is it to choose the right antenna? It is really important. So if you get it right, you unlock the full potential of your network with the right antenna. Mainly through three main aspects. It's um, signal quality that is enhanced. Um, you have, can use your spectrum much better. And with all of that, then all the software features programmable networks will have in the future. And that then directly translates also into better KPIs for your network, like enhanced uplink and downlink throughput, wider coverage, or better efficiency. That's a lot of improvements, I guess, for the CSPs. Yeah. What about for an end user like myself? Yeah, so the right antenna also creates a clearer signal, less interference, and with that, your phone will live longer. And actually, it's not only your phone, but also the overall network that um, consumes way less energy. Which is good, because my phone is always dying mm. at the end of the day. But do you have any examples then of improvements in uh, network KPIs? Yeah, so um, we've demonstrated this by swapping out antennas in a live network and then showing um, that the energy the phone needs to be connected to the antenna um, is reduced by 35%. And that's only one of the examples. Um, another one is that by swapping antennas, we've shown a much better PIM performance in the network. PIM, and I guess we're not talking <laughs> cocktails here, no? <laughs> no, it's not about cocktails, unfortunately. Um, PIM is short for passive intermodulation. And what it does, it creates noise in the receiving channel of the antenna. And you really want to minimize that in your network. What impact does PIM then have on, on the network? Um, it creates impact, for example, on uplink and coverage. And this is something that we showed for the very first time in the industry in a live network where we compared an antenna with a very normal PIM performance and then swapped it out to our PIM superior honeycomb designed antenna. And by doing so, we showed that we can then improve coverage and uplink by about 30%. So upload speeds were significantly yes. faster yes um, and I guess users are obviously can reach a much wider yeah. area as well all based on a better PIM. Yeah exactly that's right and um, we had another case where a customer of ours will, had really big challenges with energy consumption in the network so what we've done there is uh, we just swapped out competitor antennas brought ours in and then showed that the power the radio needs is reduced by about 30% and that is really significant because that directly then reduces the operating cost of the network. Okay, so it's all about doing it in a sustainable way. And have you made any adjustments then to existing sites mm -hmm. to get the same results? Mm -hmm. Nope, in uh, this case, the magic really lies just in the antenna that is purposefully designed to maximize the network impact. That's really impressive. And how do you design the antennas? Mm -hmm. 
for that network performance. Mm -hmm. So um, when we're talking about the uh, antenna design, Trionet is our new design philosophy. And we're really starting here with the net part, that's the network where we want to create an impact on. And that's what we start by defining. And then the trio really resembles the three interconnected dimensions that we are optimizing in, in the network. Yeah? So the overall antenna design, um, really importantly, the three dimensional radiation pattern and the overall system level performance of the antenna. Yep. Trionet sounds, sounds great, but how do you know then when designing the antenna that they can actually work or mm -hmm. perform in a real network? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, that's because we are starting very early on in the hardware design process with simulations. And actually we start with a digital twin of our network in which we then place a digital twin of our antenna and uh, model thousands of design parameters and their impact directly on the network so that we know what the antenna performance is in the network before the antenna is even built. Yeah, so let me show you. Um, in the past, the industry typically looked at um, an antenna in two dimensions, uh, in a horizontal and a vertical cut of um, complex pattern. But this is really way too simplistic. And that ended then up with lots of averaging in the data sheet. Um, and what we are now doing, because the real world is not two dimensional, with our digital twin, we're really looking at the three dimensional radiation pattern with all its complexity, the different side lobes and so on. And we are optimizing this so that we efficiently directing the beam into the cell um, and having then the right antenna performance on the network. So we're talking beam efficiency then. What, what, tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, so um, beam efficiency is really important because it shows you how the signal is um, transmitted to the, to the user. A more efficient beam means the energy from the antenna is just covering the area that you want to cover and is not spilling over into other areas. And that's, for example, super crucial for uplink at the cell edge. What does that mean in terms of um, impact on the network? Yeah, so if you think of the cell edge, you might have gaps in coverage. You simply don't have a signal, users can't connect. Um, but if you have too much of um, a signal, essentially you're having an overlap from different cells, you're creating interference. Um, and interference then drains your battery, has an overall uh, reduced network quality, uh, and that's what we want to minimize. And that's why we are really looking at this three-dimensional pattern. We are optimizing that so that we are covering exactly what we need to cover um, in the cell, and with that, making sure that the antenna performs best in the network and not just on a two-dimensional data sheet. So is it sounds like you've had a fair share, a fair few cases mm -hmm. um, where maybe the focus has been too much on the data sheet rather than yes, the we impact had, itself. We had a couple of these. Yeah. So um, a recent one was that a customer was really worried of one of our antennas being 0.3 dB short in a specific band. Um, and with that then having a negative impact on their network. And we showed then with our digital twin in the simulation um, that it only affects maybe something like 30 meters in coverage, but the overall performance was way enhanced, especially when it came to capacity. So I guess the, the message here is not to maybe overly obsess on those small VESA points and focus more on what the Absolutely, that's right, yeah. Good. Well, Jan, it's been good talking to you. I think a strong message here is that obviously antennas are not just hardware on no. a tower. I mm. mean, they really are a gateway to high-performing programmable networks. And when done right, of course, they can impact coverage, uplink, energy efficiency, and ultimately that will improve and bring the best network performance more than just what's written on a data sheet. So mm. Absolutely, I think that summarizes it really well. Well, Jan, thanks very much for joining me. I'm gonna take this with me because it seems a lot more valuable than I initially thought. Thank Thanks. you, Adam. Always my pleasure. Thanks a lot. Here we go? Yep. So, where do I get one of these? Oh, in Rosenheim, actually. And that's it. Thanks very much for watching Tech Unveiled. We look forward to exploring more around the technologies that are driving networks of the future. Thanks and goodbye.